today on Karamo. He get upset, he packing up, goes to his mom's house. It's one marriage in big trouble. Nick, I want to know directly from you, have you ever cheated on Rosa? No, I have not. But you need to stop going to your mother's house. You can't run from your family. What will we find when we unlock his phone? Anything before I unlock your phone, Nick, that you need to admit to? Um. The truth will come out today, and you won't believe what happens. Girlfriend, what you want to do? Plus. I'm like, you want to be a rapper? She says her friend is ruining her life. I see more for you, Benita. And I, I see, see more, more for, for myself you. as well. Don't act like it. Is this friendship about to be over for good? Welcome to the show, friends. They say absence makes the heart grow fonder. But my guest, Rosetta, says every time her husband leaves the house, she grows suspicious. Two or three times a month, an argument will send Rosetta's husband, Nicola, packing to stay at his mom's house. But Rosetta wants to know where he's really sleeping at night. And she wants me to unlock his phone and reveal what's going on. Everyone, please welcome Rosetta to the show. Rosetta. Hello. May I have a hug? Yes. You look very beautiful. Thank you. Mm, nice to meet you. Sit down for me. So please, Rosetta, tell me about your husband. <sighs> My husband is a mean, controlling mm, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. How long have you two been together and married? We've been together five years, married for two. I'm assuming the marriage is not what you expected? No, it's not. Okay. What's going on? Uh, Nicola, when I first met Nicola, was very sweet, timid, you know, um, kind. And now it's not like that anymore. Okay. He's now mean, um, controlling. So they're not the same person? No. Well, when did you see the shift? Um, in the beginning of the relationship, I was told that, you know, he was going through a transition. Mm -hmm. um, I asked what that entailed, and he told me that, you know, he didn't want any type of bottom surgery or anything, so I was open to something new, okay. uh, as long as we had that understanding. Okay. Um, here now, years later, every once in a while, it's being thrown up. And I'm like, where is this coming from? Got it. I thought so we had an understanding. So what you two agreed upon, he's now saying, well, maybe this is not what I want. Right. So is that the root of all the arguments? Is that, what, is that what's when the argument started? No, not really. Okay. Uh, the arguments just start because he's like, I'm just being picked at. Like, just mm -hmm. out of the blue, you just want to argue. So tell me about the name calling. Um, when he gets upset and drinking, he does call me stupid. Um, every once in a while, it may be, I'm a bitch, you know. Yeah. And so Nicola told you that he messed with other women? Yes. What? When? Um, in the beginning, um, he would get mad, and he would just blurt out things, uh, such as, that's why I'm sleeping with another bitch anyway. You know, um, now he would come back and say, you know I'm lying, you know I was just trying to make you upset. And in my heart, I believe that because it doesn't seem like he's moving like he's cheating, but just the fact that you could come out your mouth to hurt me and say it. Mm -hmm. And I don't put nothing past anyone. Yeah. So what happened the week before Christmas? The week before Christmas, to be honest with you, it was so minor that I don't even know what it was about. But we got into an argument, and he once again packed up because he does like to pack up and just leave. So anytime something happens, anytime. it's like, I'm, I'm done, I'm gone. Anytime. It could be yeah. so little, and he get upset, he packing up and goes to his mom's house. Mm, mm, mm. Yes. So what makes you suspicious when he leaves the house? So, Nicola has always been very clean and, you know, take care of himself. Um, but when he's going to his mom's house, he's normally throwing some sweatpants or something real quick and going to see mom real quick. Here lately, he um, now, you know, puts on some nice jeans and... Oh, he dressing up. And, you know, a little... Sh yeah. I'm like, oh, you, you looking mm. real nice today going to see mom, you know. Ah. And did he stop wearing his ring? He does. <laughs> he did. He'll take it off. And, you know, when we get mad, he'll just take it off and leave it and... Does he ever leave it when he's going to his mom's house? Yes, he does. Okay. And um, I'm starting to become... I ask about that, you know, he says, oh, it just... It reflects our marriage and we're not doing good, so I don't think I should wear the ring. And I'm like, well, but we're still married. And when you leave out without a ring, you're leaving yourself available for someone to know that you're, you know, not married.
Well, listen, everyone, I am talking to Rosetta, who wants to unlock her husband, Nicola's phone. Before we unlock Nicola's phone, I want to talk to him first. Everyone, please welcome Nicola to the show. Um, I got a few things I want to clarify first, though. Yeah, How boy, you doing? How you doing I'm doing good, thank you. Nice to be here. Clarify. Uh, you said um, you got things to clarify. I want to hear. Just a few things. Yes. Um, Yes, we did have a conversation in the beginning about the, the whole transition um, situation and um, the surgeries and things like that. It's the bottom part that I'm not with. And you knew that five years ago. And I'm totally not with it either all the way. Okay. But it is something that it, it's a consideration. It's something I've been looking, doing more research on. So you say you're not with it all the way, but then you say you're considering it. And I feel like it's not fair to me because you knew where I stood five years ago with that. Well, I can definitely hear that boundaries and communication are a bit of an issue in this relationship. But I think one of the big red flags for me is when you told me right before this that you stopped wearing your ring. I see that smile. What's yeah. going on? Um, so, you know, because of the, the arguing and the miscommunications we have mm -hmm. um, and certain things that has been done um, in the past, mm -hmm. I feel like the ring is a symbol of our merge, and when I take it off, I don't feel so merged. Nick, I want to know directly from you, have you ever cheated on Rosetta? No, I have not. It's one marriage in big trouble. But you need to stop going to your mother's house. You can't run from your family. What will we find when we unlock his phone? Anything before I unlock your phone, Nick, that you need to admit to? Um. The truth will come out today, and you won't believe what happens. When I first met Nicola, it was very sweet, timid, kind. And now it's not like that anymore. She does call me stupid. I'm a you know. So what makes you suspicious when he leaves the house? When he's going to his mom's house, he's normally throwing some sweatpants or something real quick. And now, you know, puts on some nice jeans and. Oh, he dressing up? Yeah. You stop wearing a ring. I see that smile. What's yeah. going on? I feel like the ring is a symbol of our merge, and when I take it off, I don't feel so married. I don't feel so married. That's yeah. a strong word. Yeah, because of things, you know, like when we do get into arguments, she can be a little verbally volatile mm -hmm. with her words as well. Yes. So what are the arguments about from your point of view? It's really no boundaries in our relationship. Uh, like, anything that's mine is not mine. It's y'all's. It's ours. Mm. Anything that's hers is hers because, you know, I'm not... And that's not, not true because... So is okay. that why, Nick, when you move out, you cut bills off, like, the cable? Is that... Is that so the same right now, this is, So everyone right now, this is Gigi, your friend, right? Is that, is that sharing everything? You, yes, I'm Gigi. Gigi, nice to meet I've you. I've been their friends for about eight years each. Um, and Bro will call me in an argument. Nick has moved out and cut bills off like, mm. to the house that he's paying for. So I wanted to ask Nick, you know, if that is the same of you guys sharing things. Um, yeah, mostly when I, when I turn the bills off, it's because during the argument, the things that I do get ignored, like I'm not doing it. You know, like, if I buy groceries, oh, that little bit of stuff you did, that ain't nothing. Or if I pay a bill, or if I help with an insurance bill, oh, it ain't nothing. I still have to make sure that there's a roof to be lived under and lights that has to stay on and food that has to stay in the house, okay? Yeah, you contribute to a little household stuff, but when you leave, then you don't feel like you have to contribute. You say, I've been at my, mouth, my mom's I house. I like when, I'm I, when I'm... And then I'm, you're cutting me off. That's I, another issue. I can't finish a sentence without being cut off. That's not fair. I've been in my mom's house for two weeks because we do not communicate but well. Does that we mean... do not talk well. We are on two different pages in this life now. Where's all your stuff now? In the stores. Oh, so you're not even in the house. No, nah, my stuff been in the stores for about, about six months. Mm. Yeah. So the ring comes off and things have moved out the, out the, the house. The ring comes off and on. It depends so on where we are. So why you wear it today? I wear it today because I wanted to symbolize That's our fake. merch. It's fake. But we've been in a good space, though. Mm. We've been in a good space, though. So I need, to, I need to understand and go back a little bit. Why did you tell her that you messed with other women? Um, that's when we first met. Um, when we first met, um, I was going through some little things in my life. Um, I was probably drinking a little more than, not an alcoholic or anything like that, but I was drinking a little more. Okay. So when I met her, you know, she, she pointed that out to me. So I cut that back very, uh, cause she said that that was bigger, one of the biggest problems why we would argue. Mm -hmm. Cause so I, I feel like you are So I said, you know what? Let me go ahead and test this. So I cut the drink back. We still argue. 
-hmm. So I'm like, okay. Well, that's so she said, you're... stop talking to me in this way. Okay, so I stopped doing that. It's not about what you say, it's how you say it. So I said, okay, let me fix that. But let you me didn't fix, fix that. Let me fix how You're still I controlling. Say it. And I'm sick of it. Gosh. I'm sick of not being able to express myself without getting lashed at. I'm sick and tired of saying that I'm I not smart. And you do not let me talk just like you're not letting me talk Listen, on here. Listen, I always try to respect you, you okay? I've but you always don't. You been try, very but respectful. You don't. Nick, I want to know directly from you, have you ever cheated on us? It's one marriage in big trouble. But you need to stop going to your mother's house. You can't run from your family. What will we find when we unlock his phone? Anything before I unlock your phone, Nick, that you need to admit to? Um. The truth will come out today, and you won't believe what happens. Girlfriend, what you want to do? We are on two different pages in his life now. So the ring comes off? It depends on so where we at. So why you wear it today? I wear it today because I wanted to symbolize That's our fake. marriage. It's fake. Nick, I want to know directly from you, have you ever cheated on Rosa? No, I have not. Never once? No. OK. I have not. And, and uh, that's another reason of why So then why where do you go when you leave To my house? mother's. To, to my mother's. mother's. Uh -huh. To my mother's. And what are you doing at your mother's? Chilling with my mother. But you need to stop going to your mother's house. You can't run from your family. You made a vow. You said, for goodness, sickness, better, worse, all that. So you can't pick and choose just because we had our worst that you not married today. And when you step you outside, know what our worst when is. you step, hold on, when you step outside without your ring, you're letting other people know that you're available. And you're not. I know I'm not. I'm not letting, no, this ring, let me tell you what this ring signifies to me. This ring is nothing but a piece of jewelry. I could be. Oh. I could be I could be married to you every day, wear this ring and cheat on you every day. This is true. Now, what is the symbol? What's the symbol behind that? Now, I take this ring off. I still don't cheat on you. Okay. And if anybody approached me, they would get curved, right? So at the end of the day, it's not about this ring, about what's Why leave it available for anybody to it's, approach you? Because guess what? I don't get approached. I, I, I don't, well, I Period, don't know. Because I let I it be known. And well, if I do get well, approached. I will tell you to this, I think my audience has a lot to say about please, this. So I want to go ahead and take it to the comments. Please. Can y'all have something to say about this? Let's see. All right, what's your name? Katie. Katie? All right, what's your thoughts? What's your comment? At the end of the day, it sounds like there's a lot of communication issues. It sounds like you each have your own things going on that need to be discussed and worked through. But at the end of the day, it all comes down to the respect of the marriage. And taking off your ring, when, you're, when you marry somebody and you take vows, you don't get to just decide, oh, I'm married today, I'm not married today. That's not what the vows of marriage are. And if the ring is just a piece of jewelry, then why do you take it off? Say Nick, that's, well, Nick, that's a very valid question. If well, it's just jewelry from your words, why not just keep it on then and work through your relationship? I've been trying to work through my relationship. My relationship has to be petty. My relationship has so many elements of layers of to why it's slightly dysfunctional the way it is. It's mm -hmm. financial issues here. It's a lot of issues here. It's a lot. Of it's a lot of growth. Abuse. It's a lot of growth issues here. Mm -hmm. You know. Um, but you know that taking the ring off hurts her. And, and he does it on purpose because he wants so to hurt. So if you know that it's hurting your wife, why would you still consciously do it? Well, I'm hurt too. So and and if, if all this, if me taking the ring off is the only thing that hurts her, then I got more things that hurts me that's you know more valuable than. I want to hear your point. What do you think hurts you? What hurts me is like I said again, how she talks to me. The reason why I even started leaving going to my mother's is because she would kick me out and tell me to beat it and be leaving when we would argue, get out, get my stuff. So I started getting my stuff before she even got a chance to tell me now. And that was five years ago, and I had to check myself. It wasn't really five years ago. I had to check myself, and I stopped that. So it's been at least three years since I've asked you to leave. And when you say that you're going to leave, I'm not going to beg you. I don't totally feel comfortable the in the household you say is ours. All right, sir, what's your name? Chris. Chris, what's your comment? Uh, so from the sound of it, if you feel like you're not in control and you go off to the mother's house, and originally she was saying, hey, get out, but three years you said, Rosetta, yes. right? That, that it's been since you've said that. Now it sounds like if you're not in control, you want to run away from the problem because you don't want to give her her voice. Right. And if, if you're going wherever you're going, taking the ring off as you're going there, mm -hmm. the problem's not going to go away at home because wherever you are, there you are. And that's the problem, it sounds like. Yeah, yeah, it's a, it's a real big problem. It's a real big problem, Mom. And you know, I didn't marry his as, mom. As long, I married as long him. As, as long as we are unable to communicate in a manner that I feel we should, 
I'm gonna run unless until we end it. That's a very, See very clear saying. language in the matter that I think we should. Yeah, right, that's where that space. control comes in. Yeah. That's where really, that's what's gonna have to happen. I can't see that there's a lot of issues here that we clearly have all seen here, but I think the main thing is it's time to unlock your phone. Because a lot of the questions that you have is what is Nick doing when he leaves the house? Yes. So what is, what is it that you're hoping that I'll find out in this phone so that you can have your clarity? That uh, he's actually going to his mom's house where he says that he's going. That's what you need to know. Yes. All right, so is there anything before I unlock your phone, Nick, that you want to tell us that you need to admit to? Um, that I went to my mom's. That you went to your mom's house? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, all right, well, listen, I unlocked your phone, Nick. And here are the results. We went through your phone with texts, photos, GPS, everything in the past six months. So, text messages. There was zero text in your phone showing anything nefarious, him cheating, talking to anyone. When it came to photos, we looked through. There was zero photos with anyone in your phone at all. The thing that I thought was very interesting was when it came to GPS. In the past six months, Nick's phone was pinged to his mother's address only six times. August 17th and 20th, August 8th and 12th, and November 19th and 21st. The reason that's interesting to me is because as we have a ping right here, during the week before Christmas, Nick, you left Rosetta and claimed to be at his mother's house, and the investigators showed that you were not there. So where were you? It's one marriage in big trouble. Hold up, yo, I'm trying Let to go know. back. Hold on, hold on, hold on. The truth will come out today. He did not go to his mom's house. Okay. Yeah. And you won't believe what happens. Girlfriend, what you want to do? You are the cop. Get off my stage. <laughs> this ring is nothing but a piece of jewelry. I could be. The main thing is it's time to unlock your phone. When it came to GPS, during the week before Christmas, Nick, you left Rosetta and claimed to be at his mother's house, and the investigators showed that you were not there. So where were you? Where you was at? Where was I? I don't know. You were not there. You were not there. <laughs> and so the reason I say this, you got a smile on your face. So where, where, the reason I, I say right, this is because your main concern. Wait, nah, where were you? Hold up, yo, I'm trying Let to go know. back. Hold on, hold on, hold on. All right, wait, and also, on. your main concern was, wait, is, wait, how wait, often wait, is he going to his mother's house? Day? He has not been at his mother's right. house. Right. You say a week before Christmas? Excuse me, say what? A week before Christmas, I was at my auntie's. Oh. OK. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And what about the other times? What was the ping? I'm going to need to know. What was the ping again? The ping was not near your mom's house, nowhere near. Where Here was, was the dates. These are the only ones he the was at his mom's house. The only time um, that I was at mom's. And remember, you've been, you've been going to your mom's house every weekend now for the last three months. Well, well, yeah, I would go see her um, on Saturday mornings. Uh-huh. When you got fresh And he left to you death. before Christmas. He did not. Go to his mom's I have house. no idea what, what day I can't really pinpoint and say where I was I mean, at. Man. Do you close. have where he went? So the problem is, is that because we don't know these other individuals, when it pings at these places, I we just, can only see so neighborhoods. So where were you? I, so where were you? I was. I was. I, uh, clean it up. We come on. I don't know where I was. Okay. I, I don't know where I was. Oh, but I'm a liar, though. Listen. Okay. Look. All right. At the end of the day, we still we don't need, know where you were. At the end of the day. <laughs> We're not going to get this communication thing together because at the because end of the day, because you lie, because we don't speak well and we don't verbalize our and we're our not feelings being honest. well. Well, I'm being honest. I'm being honest. So, so Nick, I want to give you an opportunity. If you're saying you're being honest, uh, yes, sir. Yeah. Where where were you then when you I said you? I just cannot were go back in my mind readily. I could barely tell you where I was at last week. You know what I'm saying? Uh, but I don't know. I can't tell. I don't know where I was at that day. But if I told her. But whenever I tell her I'm leaving to go to my mother's, that's why I'm, that's why I am. All and right. I call her and I even send her my location. Okay. You just sent me your location last week. <sighs> last so, week. So, Rosetta, Ro, all right, yes. let's be real right now. Yes. Let's take a deep breath. Okay. Um, you said some things about the fact that you're in a controlling relationship. Yes. And I'm gonna tell you, he has 
stop paying bills, he stops communicating when he wants, he's moved out, he stops wearing the ring. These things seem like spitefulness, mm -hmm. but they are a part of control. Yes. So you're not too far off. Okay. The thing is, though, is he's already shown you that he don't want to be here. Right. When someone moves out and takes off their ring in a marriage, they're giving you a clear signal, this is not where it is. Because y'all all see it, right? Yeah. This relationship has been done. From your words, Nick, you said we are on two different pages. Yeah. You are. ever try to read two different pages of a book? <laughs> it don't make sense. No. So if your man is telling you we are on two different pages, and he's already moved out his stuff, and he's taking off his ring, girlfriend, what do you want to do? It's over. Don't tell me. Look at your man. It's going to have to be over. Babe, you know I love you. Y'all can clap for that. That's, nah, I that's, that. that's coming that's to a revel fine. revelation. I mean, you know, I, I think, you know, it comes a time, and, you know, just like a beginning, there's, it has to be an end. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I think we are at, probably at, at the end of it. And know? I know this. You know, we Good. both had we one go. foot in and one foot out, you know. It's time to both of y'all step time. out. I think both of y'all deserve to be in a healthy relationship. But I can't go nowhere because, you know, that's technically my place of residence. So I can't up and move. Yeah, well, he's already moved out. Yeah. <laughs> I just got to stop letting him come in when he exactly. wants Exactly. That's my Every problem. time you let him in, that is when the relationship gets toxic again because you're, he's already moved out. And so he's just saying part of that controlling behavior that you were witnessing is part of this, like, I know I have access when I want. Right. I know I can come back when I want. Right. Don't let nobody play you for a fool like that. You're right. That's what it is. It is. And you're going to go find you somebody who's going to love you and who's going to be with you. And as you said, as you're transitioning, you've had different thoughts, different changes. And you deserve to be able to grow into the man that you are. Yeah. And you deserve to be with somebody who's going to be with you at that page. Y'all just on different pages. Right. Yes. You know what I'm saying? I yes. agree. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So this is done. It is. And I wish both of y'all the best of luck. Thank you so yeah, much for having me. All right, friends. Stay with us. We'll be right back with more. You want to be a rapper? She says her friend is ruining her life. I see more for you, Benita. And I, I see, see more, more for, for myself you. as well. Then act like it. Is this friendship about to be over for good? <laughs> Latasha and Benita have been close friends for six years, despite their 20-year age gap. Latasha says she has tried to guide Benita on the path to success, but says Benita is ruining her life by making terrible decisions. Latasha wants me to help give her friend a wake-up call before she is broke with no future. Everyone, please welcome Latasha to the show. Hey, Latasha. <laughs> you look, look at this shoe. Come on, Camilla, honey. Yes. You look beautiful. Thank you so much. This little shoe is cute, girl. Okay. Okay, I love. All right. Okay. Um, so how are you doing? I'm doing well. Thank, Thank you for having of me. Of course, I'm glad you're here. So tell me, how did you meet Benita? So Benita and I met um, about six years ago yeah. through my credit restoration business. Uh -huh. um, you know, just looking for people that wanted to educate others about financial literacy. Okay. Um, and then when we actually got to engage with one another, um, more frequently, I really noticed how amazing she was. Yeah. I was like, oh my gosh, this young lady is so articulate, she's so smart, and she's only 21 years old. You know, her mindset was off the chain. So I really saw myself in her and was like, wow, I really would love to groom Benita to help her be even more successful than I am. So um, when did you start to worry that the friendship was going down the wrong path? So maybe a year into the business, you know, of us traveling and, you know, doing things together, I noticed her lack of interest. So I said, Benita, you know, is anything going on? You know, what's wrong? Um, she didn't admit it at first, but then maybe a few days or weeks later, she says, Natasha, I'm sorry, but I think I'm going to move to Atlanta. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, why? She says, because I want to be a rapper. I was like, you want to be a rapper? Mm -hmm. You want to leave this amazing business of what we're doing to be a rapper? Why is that? Yeah. And her response was, you know, she has a passion for it. She likes doing that. And, you know, me per se as being her mentor, I, I told her that I didn't feel that that was the right thing to do. 
But if that's what you want to pursue, being a young lady, and you know, go ahead and try it. And so say, there was some support there. There was support. Yeah, there was so, support. So I heard after she moved, she blocked you on social media. How did that make you feel? Oh, and I was raged. Yeah. I was raged because I was like, why would she want me to? Why would she want to block her life from me? But you all reconnected again. How did you reconnect the second time after she disappeared? So re we reconnected maybe eight months after her moving to okay. Atlanta um, because she reached out to me. And she basically reached out to apologize. Okay. And say, you know, Latasha, you were right. Um, I just couldn't find my way in Atlanta. I felt like everyone was using me. Um, I'm so depressed, you know, can you forgive me? I want to move back to Maryland, you know, to be closer to you. So I did forgive, I did forget, and it was like we didn't lose a beat when oh, she good. came back to Maryland. So we came back, um, back into the business of things, you know, the rap is gone now. So now <laughs> um, we're into real estate. Yeah. Um, and so she's doing very well in that, you know, she even sold a house. So, but she moved out of state again. She moved out of state again. And how did you find that out? <laughs> so I went on vacation. Uh -huh. And when I got back from vacation, I called Benita. Hey, how are you? What is going on? And um, she told me that she was going back to Atlanta uh -huh. for, for a visit. And I said, are you sure you're going for a visit? You know that place is not good for you. Yeah. And she says, no, I'm going for a visit. I'm taking a friend. I'll be back in a few days. So a few days goes by. And she calls me while she's driving on the road and says, I decided that God told me to go to Texas, so I'm on my way to Texas. Oh, okay. Interesting. And I'm like, why in the world? What is in Texas, Benita? Do you know anyone there? What is your plans to do once you arrive there? She's like, I don't know. God just told me to go there, and that's where I'm going. Yeah. And I'm like, why would you leave me once again? And I thought we was on a great path to be able to, you know, groom you into being more successful than you don't see within yourself. Understandable. All right, so let's see what Benita has to say about this situation. Everyone help me welcome Benita to the show. Oh, wow. So I see both of y'all don't play with the fashion. Is that what I'm getting? How are you doing, beautiful? Great, thank you. Come thank you for on. having me on the show. You look gorgeous. Thank you. Stunning. Um, so how do you feel about what Latasha's been saying? I'm really upset because Latasha, like, you are my best friend. I see you as a big sister, but you're not my mother. And for you to say that Your I mother. told you. I see more for you, Benita. And I, I see, see more, more for, for myself you. as well. Then act like it. She says her friend is ruining her life. It had nothing to do with you. Girl. Is this friendship about to be over for good? You are the cop. Get off my stage. I met um, about six years ago yeah. through my credit restoration business. Uh -huh. I really would love to groom Benita to help her be even more successful than I am. Maybe a year into the business, she says, Natasha, I'm sorry, but I think I'm going to move to Atlanta because I want to be a rapper. So re we reconnected because she reached out to me to apologize. We came back into the business of things. She moved out of state again. She calls me while she's driving on the road and says, I decided that God told me to go to Texas, so I'm on my way to Texas. Oh, okay. I'm really upset because Latasha, like, you're not my mother. And for you to say that Your I mother. told you, I told you that God told me to go to Texas and then turn around and say that you think that you could guide me and be a God sent, God is guiding me, just like I told you. So and what has God told you to do now? What, what, what have you done in Texas that God has given you this But message? what makes you think that I need to be doing something in Texas? What makes you think that because what I'm doing- Because you need stability, you need direction. But again, that's you acting like my mother. I'm 27 years I old, I am your Latasha. mentor, I young understand. Lady. I am not your mom. I am your mentor. Latasha, I am you your were friend. my mentor at one point in time, but that mentorship ended when I moved to Atlanta, and then we became simply friends. It moved to Atlanta, but yet, are you kidding me, Benita? So you don't look at me as your mentor? No, Latasha, I look at you as my friend, as my big sister. Yes, I will come to you as, as for advice, but as far as business, as far as what I want to do with my future, like, no, you're you're not a mentor in that area, girl. Benita. I, do you think you're making bad decisions? 
I absolutely do not think I'm making bad decisions. But even if I am making bad decisions, I'm 27 years old. I can change. I feel like people from Latasha's generation, they are used to doing the same thing for years, right? Yes, Working my in the generation same job has stability. For 20 years. We have direction. And also, your have generation depression. is lost. And y'all also have your depression. Y'all have sadness. Y'all stay in relationships y'all don't want to be in. Y'all want to work in. Y'all want to work in. Y'all want to work in jobs that don't don't bring you anything good like that. You do the same thing for years, and that's not me. Like at the end of the day, like, I see more for you, Benita. And I, I see, see more, more for, for myself you. as well. Then act like it. Ooh. So, Benita, I got a question for you. What is your relationship like with Latasha? My relationship with Latasha used to be great. It used to be amazing. We used to talk all the time. We would go out all the time. I felt like I could confide in her. Going forward, my relationship with Latasha has not been good at all. Okay. When I was making a lot of the bad decisions that I was making um, in 20, la like last year, Latasha was there. Latasha was not mentoring I'm me through those there. bad decisions. Girl. I made a TikTok video talking about the transition of where I was and where I where I came to now, and mm -hmm. she's seen that. She's seen me through all those times, and you were not so worried about what I was doing or the actions I was taking We actually that have time. a video of that TikTok. Last. I want to watch that TikTok you made because I think it gives context to where you were. All my life, I thought that when I made more money, all my problems would go away. But when I finally made the money, I realized that money was never my problem at all. My marijuana addiction started when I was 16 and the alcoholism followed right after. And I was hooking up with random men and of course, crashing cars, drunk driving. And I was so broken, hurt, and insecure. Spending money on trips, alcohol, drugs. I found myself in a very toxic and abusive relationship. And when I was finally able to free myself from it, instead of getting the help I needed, I went and got my boobs done. <laughs> The pain was still there. I was still so broken and unhappy. I finally decided to just pack my stuff up and move cross country. Because the girl that I was six months ago is not the woman that y'all see today. And I just want to welcome you to my journey of peace, love, and healing. What's going on? What's happening? I'm getting really emotional right now because I just think back to who I was, you know, six months ago, a year ago, the things that I went through, yeah. the people that I was around, and to just even see myself now and to know that since I moved from, from, excuse me, since I moved, I have not drank alcohol, I have not smoked, like everything about my life has changed. I'm not out here dealing with random men anymore, like any of that. And I see more in myself spiritually. Like, yes, Latasha may not see me going places as far as a career right now, but I see me going places spiritually. I'm a lot happier than I was. Yeah. So, I'm really happy for you that you're at that place now. When you moved away, why did you block her then? So when I blocked Latasha, it was not when I moved to Texas. Okay. It was when I moved to Atlanta. Um, and when I moved to Atlanta, I was still going through a lot of things, right? I was still relying on alcohol and, and men. And, and I stopped smoking, but then I started doing shrooms. And one day I did shrooms and I had a vision to where I saw Latasha and some other people that I considered my friend. and I. I felt like they were not my real friends. I felt like they were using me, they had betrayed me. And so I went on Instagram that night and I blocked about seven people, including Latasha. Have you ever told her that you thought she was using you? Um, I think that when we reconnected, I told her that, but I didn't Guys, consistently. That girl I didn't never consistently, ever told me that I wanted to I use her. I didn't consistently feel like she was using me. That day when I was on the shrooms and I had you this bad it. trip, that's what I felt. Okay. And I know that it was just me doing drugs and being in a state of mind I shouldn't have been in. Okay. So I don't feel that way. And when I reconnected with her, I told her, like, the reasons why I blocked her, I didn't feel that way. It was a mistake, and I apologized to her. Because she, but she says that she, her to she says that we came right back together after I blocked her. But I really had to beg her. I had to apologize to her. She's yeah, like, you I don't me know, you know, more. Exactly. Why, why would I want so to don't be? come up here and tell these people like, yeah, we just got back together, like everything was great. No, you. I had to ask back for your friendship back. Yeah, and you should. You blocking me really hurt me. It had nothing to do with you, girl. Is this friendship about to be over for good? Do you forgive her? Don't miss the surprising answer next. You were my mess.
mentor at one point in time, but that mentorship ended when I moved to Atlanta and then we became simply friends. And when I moved to Atlanta, I was still going through a lot of things. Then I started doing shrooms and I had a vision. I saw Latasha and some other people that I considered my friend and I felt like they were not my real friends and I blocked about seven people. It was a mistake and I apologized to her. I really had to beg her, I had to apologize to her. And you should. Why do you think she should beg for your friendship back? Because I am a good friend. I've treated Benita better than the friends that I've known for years. I've never done nothing to hurt you. I've only done things to help you. I've, I've, I help you build a business. I help you make money. I mean, what, what else did, did you want from me? But that's the thing, Latasha. I'm not asking for anything from you. Benita, you say that she was a bad influence on you? You told my producers that? At How? certain times, absolutely. Because Latasha knew that I had battled with alcohol. Latasha knew that, you know... <laughs> Girl, I did not know. Wait, let me see what she... <laughs> okay, oh, that's, yes. a, that's a perfect example of our friendship. Every single place that we went, every time we were supposed to meet up to do real estate stuff, Latasha would be like, let's go to lunch. Lunch would turn into one cocktail, into two cocktails, into Listen, us going I to celebrate different spots, my successes. Into us staying okay, out till two After a business meeting, if I wanted to go have a cocktail, I'm going to go have a cocktail. No, you go and have multiple cocktails. Yes, I do. Just because I'm having three cocktails doesn't mean you have to have five. Okay, but if you're giving them to me, if you're I'm buying like, them, no, if you're, if you're assisting me, me I don't in the... buy your cocktails, Benita. You Sometimes buy your... you do. You're grown. Exactly, and now in my grown state, in, my, in, in me prospering and, and learning who I am, I know how to say no, but at that time, I didn't know how to say no. Benita, and as do you my want friend, to salvage this friendship? That. I do want to salvage this friendship. Okay, and but... why do you want to salvage it? Because I love Latasha. Like I said, for six years, Latasha has been my big sister. I grew up with all brothers. Latasha has helped me through a lot of my 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 depression, a lot of my sad times. Latasha has been there to help me and help me. You're contradicting yourself. You just sat here and told everyone <laughs> that I was fake. That's why you blocked me. Girl, which one is it? Well, I gotta tell you, because listen to this, I I, I think I understand where the breakdown is in this friendship. Um, and a lot part of it comes for you, Latasha. I don't think you're giving this young woman enough grace to be a young woman. Mm -hmm. And I think that part of what we forget as being the older ones, being the ones who want to mentor someone, is that they're still allowed to make choices that sometimes we might be scared of because that's what you are. You're afraid that she's not gonna make the right choices in life. You're yeah. afraid that she's gonna be hurt. But at the same way, even though you have a fear, you can't allow that fear to overshadow the fact that she still has to go through her growth. She still has to take her journey. Yeah. Can you acknowledge that, that you, ha you haven't given her enough grace in being a young woman? Yeah, I can acknowledge that. Part of this has to come from you as the mentor to realize I have to be able to give you grace for being a young woman and I have to acknowledge your growth more than I'm focusing on the things that you've done wrong. Can you do that for her? I can do that for Benita. I love her so much. I really do. Um, you're like the daughter I never had. But, it, but you know what? Even that statement goes into part of why she feels this sort of motherly controlling factor. You do see her as your daughter. And the thing is, is that I, I'm looking at you and I know all of your intentions are out of love. But I think that there's there's something that's mixed up here. And I think you have to clarify more clearly for you what the relationship is gonna be. Because part of you is a friend and part of you is a mentor figure. And I've been mentors to many people. And let me tell you something, when I see my mentors, my mentees at a bar, I walk away. I say, y'all have fun, I gotta go. <laughs> I'm not drinking with you. Because if I'm trying to show you professionalism, if I'm trying to show you how to do certain things in life based on what I think is best, I can't come and have a, a cocktail with you. I can't do these things. But if I think you're my friend, then I can't have a cocktail with you. We're gonna go out and celebrate um, th things with a drink. We're gonna do these things. And so I think for you, even though everything you're doing is based out of love, and I can tell you're a great woman. I really do believe that. I believe you're a really great woman. And I see how you're trying to assist her, but I do believe that you have to clarify that relationship. Do you want a friendship or do you wanna be her mentor? I want both. You can't have both. Because that's what causes the tension here. That's what causes you not to give her grace and that's what causes you not to see her growth. I agree. What do you want? You gotta decide now. 
because she's saying she's willing to have you, you two can come back together. You're both saying it, but you have to decide, do you want a friend or do you want a mentee? I definitely want a friend. Great. Yeah. So then if this is your friend, you got to give her grace to be a young woman. You got to give her grace to be able to make mistakes and you got to acknowledge the growth she's going through. Can you say, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you grace as a young woman, I'm going to acknowledge your growth more? Can you say that to her? Benita, I'm going to acknowledge your growth as a young woman, give you grace, and give you love. So, I think y'all going to be all right. You want to give your friend, not your mentee, a hug? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Good. I love you. Good luck, all right? All right, everyone, thank you so much for being with us. Come back next time, friends, so we can keep talking and growing. I love you all.